Action Act, Reclamation takes on a new opportunity to invest in our infrastructure and benefit the American public for the next generation. And I'd like to introduce our Assistant Secretary of Water and Science, Tanya Trujillo. She's gonna give us some opening remarks. Thank you very much, Jeff. Hello, everyone, and thank you all for joining us today to discuss this important topic. Thank you especially to the team at the Bureau of Reclamation for pulling everything together for us today. I am Tanya Trujillo, the Assistant Secretary for Water and Science here at the Department of the Interior. As Jeff said, the Inflation Reduction Act is a historic investment for us to enable us to help work with our partners to tackle the climate crisis that we are, we are experiencing. Combined with the bipartisan infrastructure law, these initiatives represent the largest investments in history to address these climate resilience challenges. The Department of the Interior and the Bureau of Reclamation are committed to prioritizing input from tribes on the opportunities and decisions that we will make related to the Inflation Reduction Act. Overall, the Department of the Interior will receive $6.6 billion in additional direct funding through the Infl Inflation Reduction Act. In a moment, Commissioner Camille kalinman tootin will provide further details about how reclamation is moving forward and will utilize this new funding for drought relief, domestic water supply projects, canal uh, improvement projects, and many more. Because many of these projects are multi-year projects, Interior is con committed to continuing discussions with tribal leaders all along the way to ensure that we have input from you and that we are able to incorporate that input throughout our process and not just today. We know that climate change is threatening our natural resources and the communities that we live, including the tribal communities and various cultures across the United States. It is impacting many of our indigenous communities and may endanger the traditional and sacred sites that we're, uh, we're involved with and some of the cultural practices. And those sites could also include impacting forests and ecosystems and traditional foods and water quality issues that impact all of our lives. The Biden-Harris administration is committed to working with tribal leaders to ensure that we have climate resilient and sustainable communities. I'm now pleased to turn it back to you, Jeff, or to Commissioner Neil Flynn tootin Thank you all again for being part of the discussion today. Thank you, Assistant Secretary. And you already introduced Camille, but I'll introduce her again. Uh, the Commissioner of the Bureau of Reclamation, Camille Kalinlan Tu. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Assistant Secretary, and good afternoon to you all. My name is Camille Klinlim Tutin, and I have the privilege of serving as the Commissioner of the Bureau of Reclamation. And it's a great uh, opportunity to be here with you today. Um, we look forward to discussing the implementation of the Inflation Reduction Act. And as Assistant Secretary mentioned, between the investments in the bipartisan infrastructure law, along with the Inflation Reduction Act, it really is a generational investment, $13 billion, to help reclamation build a more sustainable West in light of the hydrologic challenges that we see today and into the future. And this also furthers the work, not just at reclamation, but helps to further our work as a, a our trust responsibilities to you as tribal nations. So in November 2021, when the uh, president signed the bipartisan infrastructure into law, we committed to a transparent and equitable and timely implementation of the bipartisan infrastructure law. When the president signed the Inflation Reduction Act into law last summer, we are committed to that same transparency and that same timely implementation of this. Today's consultation represents a continuation of that commitment 
and that collaboration and communication. This law also underscores the all of government approach in bolstering climate resiliency and protecting natural areas for current and future generations. And as tribal communities across the country con um, continue to face extreme heat, intense storms and other climate impacts, there's no time to waste in making bold investments to enhance climate resilience. Reclamation is focused on working closely with tribes in an efficient and transparent manner to ensure that investments and programs make sense for the communities that they are intended to benefit. And that's why this conversation is important. The Native American and International Affairs Office will be, be providing responses to these questions. And this isn't just a one-off conversation. We see this as an ongoing dialogue. So as part of today's consultation, You'll hear a lot about our implementation, but I want to highlight some of those provisions and some that we've acted on to date. We are moving expeditiously to implement the Inflation Reduction Act. We were one of the first agencies in the federal government to receive our apportionment. $4.875 billion in four sections for water management and conservation efforts in the Colorado River Basin and other basins experiencing comparable levels of drought. Reclamation will use the majority of IRA funding for long-term durable solutions expected to begin in the first quarter of this calendar year. But there's a couple of other provisions we'd like to highlight for you and that we'll talk about more. Section 8004, which includes 12.5 million for emergency drought relief for tribes. Section 50231, 500 million for Bureau of Reclamation domestic water supply projects. 50232, 25 million for canal improvement projects. 50233, 4 billion for drought mitigation and reclamation states. Some of that we've done already in the Colorado River Basin. That includes Interior announcing our two step process to solicit short term conservation contributions and longer term durable system efficiency programs. And we released a funding opportunity in October for voluntary participation in the Lower Colorado Conservation and Efficiency Program. And I know some of the folks who are on here today have actually applied for the RFP, and we look forward to continuing that conversation and also bringing those agreements to fruition. As part of that funding, we also included money to mitigate the impacts for the worsening drought crisis impacting the Salton Sea in California. We must use this funding wisely to prepare for the reality of drought conditions across the West. The challenges that we face require us to work to together to develop creative and practical solutions. And this consultation is just one aspect of how we can work together. In closing, I will note that the key to success is an informed discussion among a broad range of federal leadership and with our tribal partners. And so we look forward to working with you to ensure that these funds are allocated in a way that's efficient and effective. The act advances core reclamation areas, mission areas of drought resiliency, water supply, expanded conservation, infrastructure modernization, dam safety, rural water, and tribal trusts. These are broad and diverse areas. So we want to work with you to ensure that the investments make sense for the communities that are to benefit. And you have my commitment as well as my teams to continue this dialogue for the duration of the law's implementation. Thanks again for joining us. Have a happy new year and I'll turn it back over to Jeff. Great, thank you very much, Commissioner. Appreciate that. Uh, before we move to the, the PowerPoint slides uh, that we're gonna go over, I'd briefly like to introduce to you Reclamation's leads. Uh, in implementing the Inflation Reduction Act. We have Deputy Commissioner Michael Brain. He's going to, I think, turn on his camera there. Thank you, Michael. Uh, and we also have uh, our Director of Program and Budget, Bob Wolf, um, who are the, the leads for reclamation. And now we'll get into uh, the PowerPoint presentation. I'd like to turn it over to Reclamation's Chief Engineer, Dr. David Raff, to give us a hydrology report. Thank you, Jeff. 
uh, pleasure to be here today and uh, speak to everybody about um, what is happening here with the uh, hydrology in the Western United States currently. Um, I'm not sure who's driving, but if they can advance. Uh, so I'm here just to talk to you about um, the recent past, uh, the current conditions and an outlook of what the hydrology might look like uh, for the West. So uh, since October 1st, uh, this is the picture on the left of the precipitation that has been seen uh, and on the right temperatures. And really the signal um, that is quite dominant on the precipitation is the atmospheric rivers that have hit uh, California. And those are those purple colors which show the 200, even 300 percent of uh, normal precipitation that has hit significant areas causing flooding and other damages in those areas. Uh, meanwhile, in the Pacific Northwest are some slightly um, lower than average uh, precipitation that's been seen uh, in the Midwest, uh, significantly below average, uh, but the picture in general uh, for significant portions of the Southwest, um, notwithstanding some areas of dry, is a, is a wetter signal and on top of that, on the right side is that things are relatively normal uh, across the West in terms of temperature. Uh, lots of areas slightly below normal and uh, some areas slightly above normal. Next slide. <clears throat> um, so while we've seen a lot of rain and that's certainly great um, for water supply purposes, uh, this is the current drought monitor as of uh, two weeks ago, um, and we see a persistence of significant drought in almost the entire uh, Western United States. Uh, certainly this picture compared to uh, last fall, last summer, even last winter is significantly improved. However, there is a clear distinction between uh, precipitation that has occurred over the very recent past and these long term droughts that have been devastating uh, to uh, the Western United States and continue to persist uh, despite the recent precipitation. Next slide. And on top of that same uh, view of drought, which is the background colors, um, these teacup diagrams are indicative of the current uh, water supply available within major reclamation uh, reservoirs across the West. Uh, that's the blue relative to the red dotted lines in each reservoir, which is uh, generally where those reservoirs have sit historically on this day um, or on January 17th in the past. And while areas such as the Pacific Northwest and a lot of them, um, uh, Yakima and Boise, are about average, including Puebla Dam, Bighorn Lake. Uh, there are many other reservoirs uh, that are significantly below their long-term average on this date, uh, drawing attention, of course, to Lakes, Meads, and Powell, uh, where those reservoirs remain critically low um, and uh, uh, relative to, to history. Uh, Elephant Butte Reservoir, also critically low relative towards history. Um, highlighting some fine scale distinctions from basin to basin, even in the Pacific Northwest, the Deschutes uh, also sits below average. So again, while precipitation has been great in terms of water supply, uh, the backdrop of this drought uh, carries on and, and putting it into perspective, this is long term drought versus short term precipitation. Um, and want to keep our eyes looking forward uh, as as we manage through that. Next slide, please. Uh, <clears throat> one of the mm, one of the critical signals that has been historically indicative of what type of hydrology we may see in the West is the ENSO outlook, uh, El Nina versus La Nina. Uh, we are currently in a La Nina phase. Um, and I'm not going to go too far uh, into this because it actually gets confusing with what's happening. Uh, but uh, there is a, a uh, expected transition to ENSO neutral, 
moving through the season um, and even a possibility of moving to El Nino uh, uh, through next year. And that is a significant shift in terms of what may be expected, uh, you know, moving out through this year and into next year. Next slide. So this is the Climate Prediction Center. Uh, this is NOAA that produces seasonal outlooks, and this is looking out um, through January, February, and March of this season. Uh, on the left uh, is temperature, on the right is precipitation, and this is very much a La Nina signal. Uh, so La Nina is generally uh, correlated with temperatures that are above average in the Southwest, below average in the Pacific Northwest, and a band of uh, could go either way uh, throughout the middle of the United States. Um, and similarly for precipitation, uh, the Southwest generally sees below average precipitation uh, and Pacific Northwest generally sees above average precipitation uh, and with equal chances through the middle of the United States. Uh, I would note that the signal that I uh, showed uh, in terms of what we've seen in October is almost the opposite of what is a La Nina expected signal, uh, which is why I say it's somewhat confusing and it's not a perfect predictor. Uh, but again, this is what the seasonal outlook was expected to be or is expected to be by the Climate Prediction Center. So again, while we've seen uh, a lot of precipitation uh, in some areas, uh, there is a chance that that may not continue and it is important to be as prepared as possible. Next slide. Based off of the information that we know to date, um, working with our partners at NOAA in terms of uh, accessing water supply forecasts uh, for what the water supply may actually look like when it runs off from the snowpack into our reservoirs uh, for this season. Um, it's a similar picture uh, to what we've seen in terms of precipitation. Uh, where those dark blue dots in California into the Great Basin and even into portions of the Colorado Mountains, uh, Colorado River Mountains, uh, are indicative of above that, uh, above average, above 100% of average uh, runoff, uh, below 100% of runoff in the Pacific Northwest, um, and certainly in areas of the Rio Grande, um, quite dire uh, projections of what uh, water supply may look like. Again, this is somewhat not consistent with La Nina, uh, so uh, we want to, to a certain extent, uh, be prepared to and expect uh, these conditions may not continue through this water season. Uh, it is January. Uh, the majority of snowpack uh, is remained, uh, remains to be seen uh, in the heaviest uh, months that do produce snow in the West. Uh, moving through uh, February and March. So, um, again, uh, the good news is lots of precipitation in some areas. Uh, some areas continue to see below average precipitation um, and uh, this drought that has devastated uh, the majority of the Western United States persists. Uh, and uh, as the chief engineer of the Bureau of Reclamation, we're certainly here to help uh, to the extent possible. So thank you, Jeff. Uh, thanks for this opportunity um, and looking forward to talking to everybody again uh, in the near future. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Raff. And now I will turn it over to our Director of Program and Budget, Bob Wolf, to go over the provisions in the Inflation Reduction Act. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you for the opportunity to provide an overview of reclamation provisions in the Inflation Reduction Act. The act includes, as has been stated, $6.6 .6 billion in funding for the Department of the Interior, of which well over $4 billion is for provisions specific to reclamation. Again, to review those, it's $550 million for domestic water supply projects in the 17 Western states, $25 million for canal improvement projects, $4 billion for drought mitigation in reclamation states, Twelve and a half million for emergency drought relief for tribes affected by reclamation projects. I would also note that one of the department programs, Environmental Reviews and Determinations, includes $150 million. Reclamation is one of six bureaus named in the act that would be eligible to receive funding. 
That program is being implemented by the Department of the Interior, but Reclamation plans to be an active participant. Similar to the bipartisan infrastructure law, the department will execute these investments adhering to the administration's implementation priorities. Unlike the bipartisan infrastructure law, Congress provided the lump the funds to reclamation in these four programs in lump sums for each category rather than annual installments. As has been stated, we are here today seeking your input and thoughts. We are early in the process and are here to listen. The commissioner described a couple of the initial actions, but there's still much to be done. We understand that putting funding to work is critical. Your input today is an important step in that process. I would like to briefly describe the four provisions in the Inflation Reduction Act in a bit more detail. So um, for the administration priorities, I think there's a slide that just talks about those. I will let people read those on later on at your own time. But I'd like to focus first on the slide that talks about the domestic water supply projects, which has funding available through 2031. This is a new program for which the 550 million, as I said, is available through 2031. The program is to serve disadvantaged communities or households that do not have reliable access to domestic water supply in reclamation states. That is the 17 Western states from North Dakota to Texas and Washington to California or a US territory. Reclamation can provide up to 100% of the cost of planning, design or construction exactly what cost sharing may be required in certain cases will will be uh, looking for your input today and we'll be going through a, a, a policy review process on how to best do that canal improvement projects on the next slide provide 25 million dollars again through fiscal year 2031 this is a new program to cover water conveyance facilities with solar panels to generate renewable energy that increase water efficiency. The act does allow for pilot and demonstration projects as part of the implementation. Uh, the next slide is drought mitigation in reclamation states. We received $4 billion. That is through fiscal year 2026 is the period of availability. And on the slide, it um, just talks about the funding is for grants, contracts, or financial assistance in accordance with the reclamation laws to or with public entities and Indian tribes that provide for the conduct of the following activities to mitigate impacts of drought in the reclamation states, with priority given to the Colorado River Basin and other basins experiencing comparable level of long-term drought to be implemented in compliance with applicable environmental law. So again, the first priority is water consumption for temporary or multi-year voluntary reduction diversion of water for consumptive water use. Voluntary system conservation projects that achieve verifiable reductions in use and demand for water supplies will provide environmental benefits in the lower basin or upper basin of the Colorado River. And then ecosystem and habitat restoration projects to address issues directly caused by drought in a river and basin or inland water supply. So as the commissioner mentioned, an initial focus has occurred on the Colorado River by necessity, given the conditions there. But we will be reaching out um, later this year and, and in the not too distant future to get um, more information from an input on not only the Colorado River, but other basin in the West. The next slide is the um, $12.5 million for emergency drought relief for tribes. And it specifically talks about the funding is for near-term drought relief actions to mitigate drought impacts for tribes impacted by the operation of a reclamation project. So of course that would be in the 17 Western states as I described, and it specifically says impacted by the operation of a reclamation project. So, um, Thank you for the opportunity to do an overview of the Inflation Reduction Act as it relates to reclamation and I want to turn it back over to you, Jeff. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Wolf. Um, we sent out a Federal Register notice and a Dear Tribal Leader letter announcing this tribal consultation. 
And uh, in the Federal Register notice and in that Dear Tribal Leader letter, we had put together four framing questions, uh, one for each of uh, each of the funding groups that uh, the commissioner and Bob Wolf went over and wanted to go through those questions with you. Um, we're inviting uh, comments and feedback at this point. And we also have uh, a website where you can get updates. It is um, USBR, sorry, I got to find it here, USBR.gov forward slash inflation hyphen reduction hyphen act. You can always check there for updates. We also have an email address where you can submit your comments. If you could, uh, we have uh, that open. Uh, to submit your comments. We're requesting comments uh, as a result of this tribal consultation by January 31st. Uh, and we'll put both of these in the chat, the website and the email address. The email address is usbr.ir.act, A-C-T, at usbr.gov. And I'll go through these four framing questions. I know for those that uh, are joining us through Teams, you can see the questions, but we do have some folks that are on the phone that may not be able to see the questions. So I'll read uh, each of the questions. So uh, the first one is for the emergency drought relief for tribes funding, that's the 12 and a half million. The question is, what criteria should reclamation consider? What objectives should reclamation prioritize? Again, that's for the 12 and a half million for uh, emergency drought relief for tribes. Um, the second uh, bucket, if you will, uh, for domestic water supply projects funding, that's 550 million. What factors should the commissioner consider in determining, quote, in the legislation, it says manner, and it also says, quote, criteria. Since this section allows up to 100% of the cost of planning, design, and construction, and we understand that other agencies have received increased funding for domestic water supplies. How should reclamation prioritize funding for tribes under this program? For the third group, it's the canal improvement projects. Uh, sometimes we refer to it as solar over canals. It's uh, 25 million um, that provides uh, for the design, study, and implementation of projects, including pilot and demonstration projects. And the question we put in the framing paper was, uh, should reclamation prioritize design, study, or implementation of projects? And then the fourth category of funding is the, the large, the large amount, the four billion for drought mitigation in the West, uh, in the reclamation states. How should reclamation administer these funds to mitigate drought impacts to tribes, as outlined in the Act? So those are the four questions and we are uh, opening it up now for discussion and comments. We do ask that you keep your comments to two minutes and then if we have additional time afterwards, we can always uh, circle back. Uh, you can, um, for those that are in teams, you can uh, raise your hand if you would like to make a, a comment or uh, ask a question. You can use the uh, hand icon at the top of your screen. If you are calling in on a phone, you will have to press star five to raise your hand. So again, uh, use the raise hand icon in Teams, and if you're on the phone, you can press um, star five to raise your hand. And while we're waiting for some folks, uh, I'll repeat again, we've got a, a website uh, usbr.gov forward slash inflation hyphen reduction hyphen act, where we will be putting this presentation that's being recorded, as well as the PowerPoint file that uh, you've been seeing. Natalie, do, do we have any hands or questions? No questions as of yet, Jeff. Okay. And I just checked, we did put uh, the website in the chat and we also put the email address again. You can always uh, give us your comments and, and feedback now, and you can also provide those uh, in writing through uh, our email address at usbr.ir.act at usbr.gov. I think I see hands have, now. We have a question from Margaret Vick. 
uh, you, we have allowed your microphone. You can now unmute yourself. Please state your title, your full name, and your tribal affiliation. Thank you. This is this is Margaret Vick. I'm a consultant with the Colorado River Indian Tribes. Um, the commissioner referenced in her opening remarks uh, infrastructure modernization. Um, which of these categories of funding is available for those projects? Great, thank you, Margaret, for the question. Um, I'm maybe going to ask Bob Wolf maybe to start uh, with a response to that one. Well, I think since your tribe is on the Colorado River, I would think the $4 billion for the drought mitigation reclamation states would be the most obvious category. Um, and of course, there's both irrigation water facilities and drinking water supply facilities that there may be interest in modernization um, that would save water. And so the domestic water supply would be something that also might be looked at based on the circumstance. Great, thanks, Bob. Thanks, Margaret, for the question. Could I do a, a quick follow up? I just want sure. to confirm that this funding under the IRA is available uh, for Bureau of Indian Affairs irrigation projects as well as reclamation projects. I'll take a crack at that one and then ask others to, to jump in as needed. Um, it, it's definitely open for funding for reclamation projects. We are looking into whether this funding can be used on BIA projects, and we don't have an answer at this point, but we are looking into it and, and plan to get an answer. And I think we will probably post that on our website when we're able to, to nail that down. Anybody else have a different answer to that one? Okay. Thanks, Margaret. Now, there are there other hands raised? I don't see any hands at this time. Oh, wait, there's a hand. Um, we have a question from Debbie Ho. Your microphone has now been allowed. You can unmute yourself and please provide your title, your full name, and your tribal affiliation. Hi there, Debbie Ho on behalf of the San Carlos Apache tribe. Thank you for holding this consultation. Uh, the tribe deeply appreciates uh, Bureau of Reclamation's efforts, all that you're doing uh, for tribes in the West. Wanted to ask uh, about the uh, tribal leaders letter and the framing questions. Uh, I was just trying to search for it online and I don't see it. Is it possible to share the framing questions in the chat? Uh, San Carlos Apache tribe, I'm not sure if um, they were trying to make this consultation, uh, but I'm not sure if they're on, uh, but they are planning to submit comments and uh, it would be helpful to have the framing questions. I don't know if they're if it's somewhere uh, on the on your website. And so um, if that could be shared and then also uh, not sure, not sure how long the time frame has been for the um, uh, allowing the comps, the uh, comments to be due. And I see that it's January 31st, you know, on behalf of San Carlos and just with all the stuff that's going on and just the travel to, you know, finally there are in-person meetings going on, uh, seeing if there could potentially be an extension of the comment deadline or how uh, hard and fast is that deadline? And then also um, just wanted to express appreciation for the uh, program for the 550 million for domestic water projects. And you know, saw on the slide, tribes will be considered a disadvantaged community. You know, really appreciate that. And uh, you know, San Carlos is very interested in that and wanting to see if that funding could be used for uh, groundwater management plans. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Debbie, for joining it and the questions. I put my email in the chat. Um, if you want to send me an email, I think probably the easiest way is if you send me an email, then I'll respond to your email and send you the framing paper that has the questions in it. 
Um, we are going to be posting this session uh, on our website, which will also include the PowerPoint file, which does have a framing questions as well as another alternative. But if you can send me an email, uh, we'll get you the, the framing questions um, and the uh, what we put in the federal register notice so that you guys have that. And as for the, uh, we will consider uh, extending the deadline. Uh, thank you for the feedback on that. Appreciate that. We will uh, definitely consider that. And then uh, to your question about the 550 million, um, I'm going to ask, I'm going to see if Carrie maybe can answer that about um, groundwater. Do we have Carrie? Anybody else um, want to jump in on that one? Or? Oh, um, okay. We just found out Carrie's not a presenter. So, um, okay. Right, Sorry about that. Oh, you just unmuted her? Okay. Mm -hmm. Carrie, are you able to? Sure. There we go. Hi. <laughs> Hi folks, I'm Carrie Droll. I work in the policy office for reclamation and a uh, great question on the um, domestic water supply projects and the nexus to maybe groundwater management plans. I think it's very early stages for reclamation um, determining, uh, you know, the programmatic implementation of that. Um, but uh, I would say the, the primary nexus really has to be uh, to, you know, um, how that groundwater, groundwater management plan might inform a domestic water supply project. But, you know, a lot more detail to come there is is my uh, hopefully um, <laughs> initially satisfying answer today. And I would uh, refer to anyone else on the call to jump in, maybe Bob or, or uh, Deputy Commissioner Brain as well. Great. Thank you, Carrie. Um, yeah, I, I would just say I think we're looking for input as they go about framing the program. And it definitely has to tie by the statute to you know, domestic water supply. But we're interested in any thoughts of how your groundwater management program might might make that case. And then we can consider that as we go through the, the, the final policy decisions on how we will implement it. Yeah, and and the only thing I would add, you know, uh, highlight the nexus there that that Bob and Carrie mentioned, um, but really um, highlight the importance of the feedback, right? Um, not only in this venue, but also um, in comments. Or um, we're we're really interested in hearing uh, the thoughts. Thank you. Okay, I mean, if I could just add, looking at the maps from um, that were displayed earlier. You know, the San Carlos Apache Reservation is look at, is located in the area where you see um, the extreme lack of precipitation, extreme drought, you know, southeastern Arizona. And so a groundwater management plan is needed so they can determine how to plan for the future in terms of the, the scarce water supplies. But they'll, they'll submit a comment on that, but just wanted to just close the loop. It's very helpful, your comments. Thank you. Sure. Great. Thank you very much, Debbie. Natalie, do we have anybody else that has a hand up? Not at this time. Okay. Again, if you uh, want to, if you have a comment or a question, you can use the raise hand icon at the top of your screen or press star five if you're uh, on your phone. Uh, and thanks, Debbie. I saw your chat here. So, yeah, send me an email and we'll definitely get you the information. We'll just wait a little bit longer. Again, we've got. Yeah, I, I will yes. add one thing, Jeff. It partly really the last question, but also to follow up on Mike Brain, who I think I made a really important point. Um, part of the value in comments is, and we've talked about this before, is to make sure that we didn't inadvertently um, develop an implementation plan that excludes um, a good project. 
from how we go about implementation. So having comments to make sure that we take those things into consideration, I think is really valuable. So I just wanted to follow up on Mike's point. And I'll just mention, uh, and Bob Wolf mentioned this in his uh, remarks as well, that we are at the beginning stages. We're at the early stages of formulating our plan. And so any and all comments are welcome um, and will be, uh, will be used as we formulate our plan. And we have an additional question from Debbie Ho. Your mic has been allowed. You can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi there. Uh, wanted to ask, what is the time frame for development of uh, the the guidelines, the protocols for disbursement of the money, and certainly by um, uh, requesting an extension of time for comments. I don't want to slow. We don't want to slow things down. You know, we want to make sure the money gets out. Uh, so, you know, wanted to provide that caveat. But in terms of the overview timeline for uh, implementation of these provisions, what are y'all looking at in terms of goals, understanding um, that, you know, things don't always go according to plan, but, you know, what are the benchmarks for um, implementation? Thank you. Great. Thank you, Debbie. And uh, I'll maybe start with Deputy Commissioner Michael Brain willing to tackle that and maybe Bob Wolf. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Um, you know, Debbie, very good question. Um, I would note first, you know, there's various lag times. Um, the, the four different provisions have various times uh, in which the money is available for. But I would point out that, you know, a lot of our activities thus far with the respect to the Inflation Reduction Act have focused on the $4 billion and specifically the uh, Colorado River. Um, because we put so much focus on that, now is the time to really turn towards implementation of the other three provisions and the um, provision, the, the portion of the provision, the $4 billion that uh, deals with basins of, of other comparable levels of drought to the Colorado River. Um, you know, because we're doing that now, I think it's timely to have these conversations and to be soliciting input and feedback from, from everyone. Um, there's no real timeline on when we will be moving forward with an implementation plan. I would just say that um, you know it, it's critical to get the feedback now because we're gonna be moving expeditiously, right? Um, there, there's a lot of impetus and reason for us to be moving um, and we're gonna do so pretty quickly this year. I, I know that that's, doesn't give you the full answer on the timeline, um, but hopefully it's a little helpful. Very helpful. Thank you. Natalie, do we have other hands up? No additional questions at this time. Okay. And one thing I'll mention, um, again, if you have a question, you can use the raise hand icon or press star five on your phone. Um, a couple of words that, that I heard in the um, presentations earlier was one, we're committed to transparency, timely implementation gets to, to Debbie's question and Michael Brain's answer just a minute ago, uh, but then also being wise, I heard the word wise as well, being wise with um, these funds. So uh, we appreciate any and all feedback and uh, if you don't have any today, that's fine. We can. Uh, you can submit it in writing and uh, to the other question, like I said, we'll we'll consider extending the deadline. One other point I'll I'll go back to as we're waiting is I assume we don't have anybody right now, Natalie. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Okay. Um I'll just uh, point out, and I think Bob uh, mentioned this very quickly on the domestic water supply projects, 550 million. Um, that last bullet point there of fairly recognized tribes uh, located in the 17 Western states will be considered uh, a disadvantaged community for uh, that funding. And then uh, while we're waiting to see if uh, other uh, people have questions or comments, uh, I'll just um, Bob Wolf quickly went over this, uh, didn't really go over this slide. We just uh, mentioned it very briefly, but I'll, I'll park here for a little bit if people want to read through that slide as we're waiting.
other questions or comments? I, I feel like a broken record, but I, I'm repeating the same things in case other people join late. Uh, we've got a website that has information. We did have a information session uh, that some of you may have attended back. I think it was at the end of September on the Inflation Reduction Act. We posted that uh, PowerPoint that was uh, given as well as other uh, or the uh, recording of that session. And it's at our website at usbr.gov backslash inflation hyphen reduction hyphen act. We have a question from James Eckland. Your mic has been allowed. Please state your title, your full name and your tribal affiliation. Hi, my name is James Eckland, and I'm actually with the law firm of Sherman and Howard in Denver, Colorado. I work with a number of Colorado River uh, Basin tribes. Um, and my question is around recycled water infrastructure and gray water uh, technology adoption and implementation. I'm just wondering if there was a particular direction that the Bureau would push uh, that kind of uh, uh, project uh, toward one of the tranches of funding. Great question. Thank you. Um, I think I, I'm going to call on Bob. I'll put Bob on the spot on this one. Yeah, and, and Mike may want to add on this, but yeah. um, the first thing I would point out is in addition to these four uh, categories of money under the Inflation Reduction Act, also recall with we have the bipartisan infrastructure law funding that has specific funding for Title 16 water reclamation and reuse and has a new category of large scale water recycling as part of that package. So that's, I think, a billion dollars or thereabouts specifically for that kind of program. There's also some desalination money, which could be brackish or seawater. So it doesn't have to be ocean water. It could also be brackish water. Within these categories, of course, the Colorado River, a lot of the emphasis in the what's being called the second bucket of funding will be trying to make sure that there is system water that results from those longer term sustainable investments. Um, so those are things that uh, and there will be other basins that we'll be looking at as well, in addition to the Colorado River Basin. So there might well be water recycling projects that would be part of the infrastructure investment on those. But again, don't forget the bipartisan infrastructure law and the opportunities under that one as well. Great, thanks, Bob. Uh, Deputy Commissioner Brain, did you have anything to add at this point on that? No, I, I, I think Bob said it really well. I think there's a certainly a direct connection um, to the bipartisan infrastructure law and certainly uh, um, lots of funding directed toward those activities uh, in the BIL. Um, so that, that's, yeah, Bob, Bob said it very well. Great, thanks Bob and thanks Deputy Commissioner Brain. I also put uh, in our chat, uh, we, we just double put it in there, uh, the link to our BIL website. We do have a, a website for the bi our implementation of the bipartisan infrastructure law and we've been giving quarterly updates. We had one just uh, last week, um, updates and all the PowerPoints and updates uh, and also frequently asked questions is on that website as well. And we do plan to have similar updates for the Inflation Reduction Act. We'll probably have, uh, hasn't been decided yet, but I would guess we'd probably do maybe quarterly updates uh, as we start working on implementing We've already been working on implementing the IRA, but as we continue implementing. Natalie, do we have anybody, any other questions or comments? There's no hands raised at this time. Okay. Well, I'll give us a couple more minutes and then I think we'll, we'll draw it to a close. Um, Again, if you want to raise your hand, use the raise hand icon in Teams or press star five uh, if you're dialing in. Um, we've put in the chat our website. Uh, we've got uh, our email address, usbr.ir.act at usbr.gov. Uh, feel free to 
send us your comments in writing. We have that open currently through January 31st. We will consider whether we want to extend that or not. Any other last round, last chance for comments or questions? Wait just a little bit longer. Last chance. All right, great. Well, want to thank. Uh, I want to thank everybody that helped put this together. A lot of people went into putting this together. I want to thank the folks, especially on the East Coast. I know it's getting close to to dinner time out there. At least the end of the workday. Thank you to the the presenters um, that gave opening comments and uh, presented some slides. Again, this presentation, uh, the PowerPoint presentation and the recording will be available on our website. We'll be hosting periodic informational webinars. And uh, on the behalf of on behalf of Bureau of Reclamation, thank you for attending today's tribal consultation session. It was an honor and a privilege and um, we thank you very much and we look forward to working with you all. Have a good rest of the afternoon or evening. Thank you.